G'day everybody, Max Wright, and uh, we've got a fabulous video here for you today. This is your questions answered. So my previous video, you'll see here, 4,000 views from just a few days ago telling you exactly how this whole situation is going to play out to the best of my ability, what I think is going to happen. I invited you guys to make some comments and uh, 95 comments here and questions that we're going to go through. So that's what this video is going to be about. Um, I do want to talk about the next video. It's going to be an absolute cracker, I think, maybe one of my best videos ever. So subscribe now. Do me a favor, like this one, help me get the word out, share this with as many people as you can. I don't ask for donate for donations, I don't monetize the channel, I don't do any of that stuff. Just help me out. If you want to help me out, share this with people, that would really help. Um, now the next video, I'm going to take some three of my favorite economic commentators. Peter Schiff, Harry Dent, Mike Maloney. All three have been calling for this crash. All three think it's going to play out a different way and all three are playing it a different way. I'm gonna take a look at their three strategies. Uh, I'm gonna agree with them where I agree with them, shoot holes in them where I think there's errors, and uh, compare all three strategies. I think it's gonna be a bumper uh, video that you're really gonna enjoy, because, well, yeah, anyway, you, you, if you guys follow them, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Trying to figure out which way to go is very, very interesting. By the way, if you have contacts with any of these people, or you'd like me to interview them, or they could be here to defend their own positions, that would be fa fabulous please go ahead and put us in contact, that would be great. All right guys, um, so off to this video with a Q and A, let's get into it. Um, okay, first comment by Pat. I got my crypto, my silver and my seeds, just need some lead. It's a pretty solid strategy there, Pat. Uh, greatest of greatest videos, thank you guys. I really do appreciate the kind, the, the kind uh, words. It really does motivate me to make more of these. Um, let's get into this. Eric, you, the US dollar is king, gold will be pegged, get out of cryptocurrencies. Alrighty, let's see what kind of, uh, US dollar is king, and that is definitely not Peter Schiff. Get out of cryptocurrencies, that is Peter Schiff. This is looking like um, Harry Dent school of thought. So interesting idea, Eric. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna save for the next video, your uh, analysis here and see um, how it holds up when I get under some scrutiny in the next video. Welcome back, brother, we missed you, thank you. Okay, first question. If bail-ins are possible, where shall we keep our cash? All right, Christian, fantastic question. There is a whole section in Success Council uh, members area about this. There's several different strategies I use for the large amounts of cash. For relatively small amounts of cash, I'll give you guys a very simple thing. Go to the bank and ask for your cash. Go to your ATM, pull out the maximum amount every day. Um, just get as much cash in your hands as you can. You can get a significant amount out that way, out that way believe it or not. Um, and then be, don't, don't tell anyone what you're doing, that's for sure. You don't want to let it be known that you've got all this money at your home. Uh, or better yet, don't have it at your home and have it somewhere else. But um, So the easiest and simplest way is to go to the bank and ask for it. Um, now for larger amounts, I'm trying to think if there's a short way for me to do this. There's two different strategies that I use. Uh, and they're both in the Success Council members area. I'm not trying to be difficult here. They're just, they're, it's a long time to explain them and introduce you to the people who can take care of it. And I just don't think I can cover it here. So my apologies for that. Uh, if you want to join Success Council, I will put a link in, in the description. Um, all right, uh, Kev here. Is it safe to have your physical gold and silver bullion in Loomis Vault in Switzerland? Can it be confiscated? I am unfamiliar with Loomis, so this is not a comment about Loomis. Can it be confiscated? Of course it can be confiscated. Anything can be confiscated. Uh, there is no way to, to eliminate the possibility of confiscation. There's only ways to mitigate that risk. And uh, I think Switzerland is a fine option. I used to have metals there. I don't have metals there anymore, actually. Um, but I used to have metals there in Switzerland. Uh, and I think it is a very good jurisdiction. And it is good. First... Go around, have, if you, depending on how much you have, but if you have the ability to get some metals, first of all, have it in your own jurisdiction. But once you get to a comfortable level and you, you're, you're, planning, uh, you're planning on you know, worst case scenarios, then you can always plan to get out of that jurisdiction. And I have metals in several different jurisdictions around the world. Okay, Jesus in home. I purchased your Bitcoin starter kit uh, in 20, uh, uh, during 2019. Uh, have you added or changed anything since? Uh, no, for those of you who don't know, the Bitcoin Starter Kit is um, a product I sell, and it's the complete philosophy and understanding about what to do with Bitcoin, but then also some tutorials on how to actually get started. So literally follow, me, follow the screenshots and do step A, step B, step C to how to properly 
purchase your Bitcoin and secure it, get it off exchanges and hold it in your own private wallet. The answer to the question, uh, cheeses in home, is that it's all the same content. I have not updated that in the last 12 months, but it is all still relevant. Um, Bostian, hi Max, are they hiding God? I'm gonna guess that's gold. Is more land available? Globalist cabal, like, uh, I have no idea what you're talking about there, Bostian. Sorry, gonna move on from that one. Uh, big question that I have, is when to know when the inflection point has occurred. Uh, that's basically how is the bottom, how do you know you're at the bottom? How do you know when the market is done dumping and the recession is over? What signs to look for, etc. I feel I could be waiting for more downside in the traditional markets and the bottom was in already. That's my main concern. Fantastic question, Scotty. Um, this is one of the best. So especially right now, you know, the Dow, for example, uh, went all the way down to 18,000 or nearly 18,000. Now it's back up at 22. Did you miss buying in at the bottom? Uh, the answer is no, you didn't, not by a long stretch. So it never goes down in a straight line. It does walk down the stairs, up, down, up, down, up, down, but in a downtrend. So it, I do not expect it to reach a new all-time high, i.e. over 29,000. That would be reversing the trend. We are going to be in a downtrend and we're going to be in a downtrend for a few years. So the Great Depression, that downtrend lasted three years. Um, 2008, that downtrend lasted 18 months. From top to bottom, it was 18 months. So there's a significant amount of time. The, the length of time is that that lasts. There's a number of factors, but probably the biggest one is how much the government tries to help. The more they try and help, the longer that pain and misery must be. So we see $2 trillion stimulus package just released. We can expect this uh, downside to go down longer than uh, I would suggest than 2008. It's gonna go down uh, probably for about two years. That's my best guess. So for time-wise, there's a little bit of a marker, a little bit of an indication. Um, other clues, targets. So we've, got, we've just gone down to 18,000. We're back up now to 22,000. I anticipate it going up a little bit more. Um, we'll see how things go. But all said and done, from the 29,000 high, I'm expecting an 80% drop. Now, this stuff is really hard to measure, again, because we don't know how much they're going to print. If they print $100 trillion, then it might not go down that far. Um, but... but you know, it doesn't matter because the money's going into hyperinflation. So we do have some things to, to look out for, but as it stands now, the generally the governments do not react quick enough to stop that, that crash. So again, I'm expecting it to get down to about 80%, but we might see so much money come in early that that doesn't happen. We'll keep an eye out for it. Stay tuned to the channel subscribe and I'll keep you up to date with my observations at least. But there's a lot of things in flux and it's hard to call it out now. Uh, Sonia from Brisbane, Australia. What are your thoughts in property in Australia? So Sonia, um, the real estate, look, the, the most desirable real estate in the world is always the biggest bubble. After when there's money printing going on for decades, People are feeling wealthy, people are feeling flush, they wanna live in the coolest, best places in the world. Sydney and Melbourne are two of the coolest places in the world. And so therefore, Sydney, and, uh, Bris uh, Sydney, Melbourne, to a lesser extent, Brisbane, are some of the most bubblicious um, uh, real estate markets in the world and will get hit the hardest. That's true of Vancouver, Miami, London, Florida, all the, Singapore, Hong Kong, all those places are going to get hit very, very hard. Um, now, maybe more rural Australia, whatever. On the, coming out of this crisis, Australia's balance sheet and Australia's demographics are some of the best in the world. So when this, at the bottom, two, three years from now, I think Australia's going to be one of the best places in the world to buy real estate. I'm looking forward to my Sydney Harbourfront property already, actually. Um, but it's going to get hit hard in the meantime. So I do, I'm not recommending Australia real estate right now. I hope that helps, Sonia. Uh, Moshi, my question is, what do you think of F and DeFi projects and what will you what will do in the coming years? I've been accumulating BTC, F, and uh, Chainlink. So this just for everybody, guys, I did not, I get, go back three, four, five years, 
I was like a super expert in the crypto world. Um, I would say top top 10 commentators in the world. Not that I did too much public speaking or anything like that, but in terms of knowledge, I knew a hell of a lot uh, that was out there commentating. Of course, the guys out there doing the building and things like that had a different skill set. But in terms of understanding Bitcoin, where it was going and stuff like that, I was very, very strong. That is not true now. I kind of did what I, I did what I needed to do with Bitcoin and then I, was, I moved on to other asset classes and understanding those. So going into all these different altcoins alt and whatever else, I am not super up to date on all the different altcoins. Um, I think BTC, so think fear. In the next two, two years, things are gonna be scary. People are gonna be scared. There's a lot of fear in the market. Things with the biggest brand name with the most trust are going to do well. I think Bitcoin's gonna do much better than the altcoins for a while. Now. If it comes to a point where, and we're a good year or two away from this, where we go into hyperinflation, where people actually need a currency to trade on the black market to buy their grocery stores, to buy their groceries, then you might see one of these technologically advanced altcoins absolutely flourish more so than Bitcoin. But I think in the short term, Bitcoin is going to do best. Um, so, okay, that's in relation to all the other coins. Let me answer the question further. What's Bitcoin going to do in relation to dollars? This is a fantastic question. This is going to be one that I'm going to answer, especially on the next, um, on the next video, but I'll do a little bit of thing now. It depends. So people are, people are going to get scared. People are going to need money to live. It's entirely possible that everything goes down. Gold, silver, Bitcoin, and every other asset class on the planet. That is a genuine possibility. That's a Harry Dent prediction. I'll go into the pros and cons of that prediction more. But that's a very, very serious possibility. The other possibility, the, the money comes from the central banks thick and fast early. They don't go down so much. The, the dollars and the fiat currencies start depreciating relatively quickly. But in order to answer this question, we have to judge the speed with which they're going to print the trillions of dollars. And this is decisions made by one or two men. We can look at history and have a fair idea. I think these things are going to go down. Now, the good thing about Bitcoin versus gold, good and bad, gold, it's been partly possible you just can't get your hands on it. And the price of gold stays strong. The physical price of gold stays strong no matter what. Bitcoin is not like that. You can always get your hands on Bitcoin. It's just at what the question is at what price. So if it's going to go down a little bit, you might want to say, sit back and wait for Bitcoin to come back. If you, th if you think that gold's going to go down too and get hammered in a deflation like everybody else, you might say, well, I still need to buy it because I can't get my hands on it at that lower price at all. So there's a little bit of a distinction there between those two asset classes. I'm going to talk about that more in the next video. But weighing up those risks, and I'll be upfront here now, I am hedging against all of those things. I want to have a little bit in Bitcoin. I want to have a little bit in cash. I want to have a little bit in precious metals. All three of them have pros. All three of them have cons eventually all, uh, two of them will do very well. In the short term, I know US dollars should do pretty well. It's when the transition happens and timing that from US dollars into the other things, that's the big question. Uh, EO Finland, how to control bail-in risk in situations where fiat currency is mandatory and very risky to hold at the same time, like in the situation that you are suggesting in your videos? e.g. when selling Bitcoin and gold and buying real estate, including property taxes and other taxes. Got a little bit confused there, um, but how to control bail-in risk. Again, I answered this before. Small amounts of money, go and get cash out of the bank. Six figures and up, you need more creative solutions. You need, need larger places to, to deal with that amount of money. Um, and there are ways to do it. I'll give you one strategy real fast, uh, so it's not gonna explain it properly, but it'll give you a clue. There are places, for example, where gold vaults, where gold holders can have gold in the vault, and let's say they have, in today's market, $200,000 worth of gold. They can use that as security for you, and you can go in and lend them $100,000, and there's $200,000 worth of gold on, uh, in the vault as your security that they will pay this back. If the value of gold gets smashed like everything else and it gets down to $100,000, the gold company will liquidate their holdings and replace your money. So it's a very, very small risk um, to hold dollars. What you're effectively doing is you're lending out, you're making money on it, you're earning an interest rate, 
and the, the, there's gold sitting in a vault protecting your um, investment in this other person. If they don't pay it back, great. You just bought gold at 50, half the price of what it is today. Or that, that, that's not by definition. If gold gets collapses in price, then you're buying it at 50% of the price today. Um, if price doesn't, they just they liquidate the gold, make you whole, and let them you keep the rest of their gold or the rest of their cash. That's how that system works. So uh, I, I hope that helps. Um, that's another way to hold gold, which is really cool. Fully explained in the um, Success Council members area, along with the contact details of the people that you can do that with. To the moon. Thank you. Question. I just put in a 30% down payment for an apartment in a great peaceful location in a big city. I plan to live there for five plus years and pay down the mortgage for a long term. Am I okay if I don't need to sell later or am I screwed? Um, to the moon, you're screwed. Sorry to be blunt on that. Um, excuse me. Yeah. Um, so no, you're not screwed because the real estate market hasn't crashed yet and you can probably get out of it pretty quickly. But real, especially in big cities, I think real estate, especially if it's a desirable big city, like I mentioned earlier, you know, uh, New York, LA, Sydney, Melbourne, Vancouver, London, Hong Kong, Singapore, all the really good ones, the really desirable ones, they're going to get hit. But the big cities are going to get hit. Um, and real estate is going to stay down for a long time. It's, going to, it's just going to go down a lot. Real estate is going to get hit hard. In those places, probably 50% plus, right? Maybe in more like Midwest, if you're in like the Midwest US, maybe they're going to go down 30%, something like that, because they didn't bubble as much. Um, so can you, yeah, can you sit there and hold and wait? You can, but why would you not want to? Why wouldn't you want to buy that same apartment for a 50% discount? Sell it, hold the cash, rent, come back in and buy that apartment at half price. That would be my advice for you. Uh, by the way, uh, disclaimers, asterisks, all the good things, no licenses, no financial planner, I'm not giving advice. The, I'm just answering what I would do if I were in your situation. You've got to make your own decisions. Uh, all this makes sense. Thank you. Uh, hey there, thank you very much for sharing this priceless advice. Question, escape debt at all costs as fast as possible or use some income to partially stock Bitcoin silver instead and use it to escape debt even better after those asset classes surge? Great question, Conrad. Again, we come back to the question. Is this going to be a deflationary collapse or will the feds react so quickly that they stop the deflationary collapse but cause a hyperinflation? In a hyperinflation, you wanna be loaded up on debt as best as you can. Because what happens is, you, you sell a loaf of bread for $100,000, you go and pay off your mortgage from five years ago, right? So the debt gets inflated away, but you still own the asset. In a deflationary crisis, you don't want to be leveraged. You don't want to have any debt. You don't want to use debt to buy an asset at an inflated price. You want to jump on the sidelines, hold the cash, let it collapse. Then you, at the bottom, now you can jump in and leverage your face off, buy up as much as you can. At that time, they cash flow like crazy. You've got no idea. The, 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 history, the examples from history are just mind blowing. You can buy stocks with like a 30% yield. You can buy real estate with 100% yield. It's just insane. At the peak of the Great Depression, uh, Great Depression, uh, Hilton, as in the starter of the Hilton uh, Hotel Dynasty, his first four hotels were bought at 100% yield, meaning they were making $2 million a year. He bought it for $2 million a year. You buy up those all day long with as much leverage as possible at the bottom. Okay, but your question is for right now, do we have deflationary or do we have hyperinflationary? That's the question we've all got to deal with. <clears throat> And it all depends on what a handful of decision makers in closed doors do and how quick they do it. And it's very, very hard to plan for. It's very, very frustrating, which is what's going to make this uh, collapse so much worse. There are smart people out there. They, can't, they will make the right decisions and they can't even do it because you've got to guess what one silly central bank is going to do and, and then try and adjust. You can't just try and you can't predict the market. See, we, I can predict the market. That's easy. It's going to be deflationary. But then you've got, what's this guy going to do with the printing press? If he prints, you know, a hundred trillion dollars, all bets are off. There's no deflation. There's no deflation. There's hyperinflation tomorrow. So this is the balance that we're going against. And you, you want to be set either way. 
And I think that leans to be mostly deleveraged. Either way, you're gonna go through two, maybe three years of a misery, falling prices in relation to gold or silver and maybe real money. At the, from now, three years from now, I'm very, very confident um, gold, silver, Bitcoin are gonna do very well. But in the meantime, might it be smart to sell those things get smashed like everything else. You buy in relatively early and you come back to here. That's you, If you want to be aggressive, you can do that. But that depends on how aggressive you want to be. Okay, uh, buy silver or pay off credit cards. That's a situation many currently find themselves in. Not sure what to do. This is the exact same question. Do, do, I, do I carry debt or do I just get in silver, gold and silver when I can? And you need to kind of, this is your, the risk assessment that you've got to do. It depends on your situation. Depends on, like, if you've got, I, I think of it as buckets. I've got several buckets that if I lose all my other buckets, I'm still going to be wealthy just with this bucket. So with this bucket, I can play the uh, debt's going to be inflated away game and leverage myself. And if it goes that way, I'm going to be fine. With this bucket, I can do the get gold and silver because it might be all gone at any price and you can't get your hands on it. And with this bucket, I can be, okay, I'm holding cash use those creative strategies I used earlier, and if everything gets collapsed, I've still got my cash. All, any, all, from my situation, all three of these buckets, I'm gonna be just fine. If you're in a situation where you've got like $50,000 to your name, you might you don't have three buckets to play with, and I get that, and you might wanna say, well, I wanna, I wanna bet it all on one horse and hope. That's a reasonable strategy, and that's a very, very tough situation to be in, um, and, I, and I feel for people who are in, those situ who are in that situation. Um, so I would, I mean, when all said and done, if you can afford to hold a good amount of money, five, five figures worth in physical precious metals, and you can survive for the next two, three years without sort of having to sell that to survive, you're going to do really well. Like if you can come out of this with, uh, let's just say five ounces of gold, if you still have five ounces of gold in your hand, two, three years, you're doing very, very well. So it, but it just depends on how, how much you want to play this. It depends on how aggressive you want to be and how much money you want to put into each bucket. So that's the best I can answer that. Sorry, but that's a tough situation if you do not have much, Conrad. Uh, Soren, oh, I've just done that one. Uh, this is very insightful. Can I thank you enough? I'll be thanking you again in a few years' time. Thank you so much, Josh. Uh, do you think bail-ins will happen in Canada? Uh, only about six banks that are heavily government backed and survived the previous recession as well. Let's see what else we're saying. Uh, sorry, just I'll answer that right now. Listen, I'm not paying that much attention to Canada banks. Bailands are a threat everywhere. Um, there's no place where it's not a possibility, that's for sure. Um, some places are more likely than others. Yeah, I just don't know. You, you, it's just, it's, I can read the market relatively well. It's reading the timing of the sociopaths and central bankers and people who think they're God who want to try and fix it. That's what's hard to read. Um, and just whether or not banks get bailed in, that's just some guy's decision at a later date. History shows that our leaders are weak and they print, if access to an infinite, to a printing press is there, they use it. And uh, I don't know, the printing press is a softer and easier solution and more palatable solution for any politician than a bail-in, but there might be a, a politician who's prudent enough to do a bail-in. There should be a bail-in. That's what should happen. Um, you're a depositor in a bank. If you don't understand that that's not your money, that you gave them your money, you, it's now their money, and you, they just promised to give it back, and that means you're an investor in the bank. And if the bank goes belly up, you should get chopped in half, but they might bail it out. Tough one to read. Also, do you believe in privacy cryptos at all or only Bitcoin? I'm going to answer this one. I, privacy cryptos are a great thing, um, but in terms of whether or not their price is going to explode here soon, uh, no. The day they start banning uh, Bitcoin or stuff like that or um, confiscating Bitcoin, that's a totally different answer. Then you'll see those privacy cryptos go nuts. Thank you very much for this video. I really appreciate you taking the time. Uh, please drop more knowledge as you can afford. Thank you so much. It's all great questions, and thank you for the compliment. Um, Johan, I think I'm saying that rightly. Uh, what about gold mining stocks? So I never got, and as we read that question, a, you might not see it, but there's a Peter Schiff podcast over here. Um, what about gold mining stocks? I've never ever got into them. I, I just 
I don't like the stock market for a whole bunch of reasons. There's so many many counterparties. I don't really like having my money that that many people removed from me. Um, so I've never really got into mining stocks, but from what I understand, mining stock on the up legs when gold goes up, gold mining stocks do even better. But I would definitely be holding off on mining stocks until you get a very very clear and loud simple uh, signal that gold has bottomed and is on its way up. And that may be a year from now. I don't know. It's just it's tough to read. It's tough to read how quickly the citizens are going to lose faith in the currencies. When they do, the, right now the money is leaving everywhere. So what's happening is the money is leaving all the different asset classes, like many of them. To stop the price falling, the Fed is buying up what everyone's selling. They get their money and they're sitting in US dollars. So you've got all these asset classes, like a big funnel, falling into cash. You've then got, at the top, printing presses, printing, printing, printing presses, buying up all of these things that, by definition, overvalued prices. The government is buying overvalued assets. They, now, people invested in assets. They made money on the way up. They should lose money on the way down. But the, the, the central banks, they take care of their friends, the rich, and they buy all their toxic assets at full face value. And the other taxpayers owns these toxic assets. And that's what happens. There's, meanwhile, the rich, the smart, selling all their stock, they're getting into cash, holding it into, into cash, right? We sit on the sidelines. The question is, at some point, all that money that funneled into cash will, with enough, printing, enough money printing at the top, people realize they should lose faith in the fiat currencies. And then all that fiat currency has to funnel into somewhere even smaller. And what's that something smaller? Gold, Bitcoin is all I can see. They're the last two refuges. But these two might get smashed on the way through. People might get out of these to get into cash because cash is looking so strong and they just have to, to survive, to eat, to whatever. Um, and maybe Bitcoin and gold have to get into stronger hands before it turns around. We have to wait and see how that plays out. Uh, what do you think will happen to gold, silver and Bitcoin when the crash comes and when the crash is over? Kind of just answered that. That funnel mentality, that's always in my head. Printing presses at the top, buying a whole bunch of toxic assets, real estate, stocks, derivatives, you name it, quadrillions of nonsense in there, right? They're buying it. Every, the rich are allowed to sell that to the government, i.e. to the, the poor, dumb taxpayer. Uh, they take their cash out and they sit in cash. At some point, that funnel will flow into gold, silver, and Bitcoin. That's the prediction. Timing is all the fun part. Hey Max, great update. Uh, what do you think about commodities and what kind of stocks or asset classes are you researching to buy at the end of the chaos? Uh, great question, uh, Claims. Um, hang on, what was the first part? What are the commodities? So there's different kinds of commodities. I mean, oil's already down, what, plus 50%. Um, gold and is holding up relatively well. Precious metals holding up relatively well. Um, but yeah, the, 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 the so there's an interesting part. This is why deflationary collapses are so much better than hyperinflationary collapses. In a deflationary collapse, what happens is um, there's still people still dying to work. You can hire labor very, very cheaply, and the the a lot of businesses get smashed. But the basics like food and so forth, if you've got the money to buy it, you can buy the food. Like if you didn't get wiped out, you can buy food. The growers are still growing. There's plenty of people still willing to drive the trucks and do the whole supply chain and all that stuff. In a hyperinflationary collapse, which is where they're pushing us with all the money printing, who wants to be the truck driver who gets paid $50,000 to drive the truck that afternoon? By the time he goes to spend it, the $50,000 doesn't buy anything. And so supply chains break down for even the most basic stuff. That's why hyperinflationary things are so much worse. The, the part of the economy that is could grow and is working and is efficient can't even because there's no unit of currency around. Unless those same people who are the, the, the farmers or the growers, the supply industry, who, these industries need to, need to work, maybe they were smart enough to get in gold and silver and they can pay their truck drivers with a silver coin or some Bitcoin or something like that. So... Or maybe those farms and everything got smashed, people with Bitcoin and silver come in and buy those farms, take over them, and can get the economy moving again. So all these kinds of things need to take place. Um, 
and but commodities for the most part are getting smashed because the demand for so many goods. No one's buying TVs today. I guarantee you, TV purchases are down all the all the amounts, ninety percent. Um, so a lot of industries are getting smashed. Raw materials are going to get smashed too because the demand for products uh, are going to slow down as well. Uh, contrarian dude, are you left-handed? You look up to your right. Uh, NLP says that's constructs to the left is remembering. So I'm somewhat familiar with NLP. If I'm looking up to my left, by the way, this is my left. Sometimes the video flips, so this is my left. If I'm looking up to my left, I'm remembering. And if I'm looking to my right, I am what? Making up, I think. So heads up, this is left. I am right-handed. Um, but in answer to, to you, so NLP, uh, I might be remembering a fact over here, but then I've got to think about how to present it. So for me, that process is very creative. So I might remember a fact over there, but as I'm talking, I'm probably looking up to the right to think how I want to present it in a way. One of my best skill sets is teaching, taking very difficult concepts and teaching in ways people can understand. And so uh, I just I, one of my favorite things is teaching my five-year-old stuff. Um, so I'm like a homeschool dad. And uh, I'm just always creatively thinking about how to get the message across in a very simple, easy to understand way that people who have not got you know, years of economics training or whatever else are gonna be able to get. So if I'm looking right, I'm hopefully not making up facts. No, I'm really not. Most of the stuff, if I say, if, if I present it as a fact, I'm pretty much sure it is a fact or at least believe it to be. If I'm making things up, it's how to creatively present it. Thank you for the uh, left of field question, living spontaneously, I liked it. I haven't dealt in NLP in almost 10 years, so I've forgotten most of it, but it's a very interesting subject. Um, let's see, how do you buy gold? My coworkers are actually buying gold coins. Good luck on selling that. Uh, yeah, no, that'll be very, very easy to sell. That'll be the most liquid thing in the world. So physical precious metals are the easiest thing in the world to sell. So holding physical gold coins is a great way to hold it. Pretty much every town and city in the country or in all over the world has a gold bullion shop, a coin shop. Pretty much everyone is within a few hours drive of a coin shop that you can sell it on. If not, you can sell it on eBay and sell it to a whole bunch of people. Physical gold is a physical gold silver is a fantastic thing to have. Uh, Andrea Wir, uh, if you believe in high inflation, should you should you not stay in gold? Uh, you are saying to then get into real estate and, and stocks again to be inflation protected, but these can get hammered under high inflation. Look at the seventies. Da 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 which tanked uh, real estate and stocks because of leverage got so extensive. So if rates go up, read more, I think I get the, the gist of it. Well, that's right. My point of view is that it's hard to time for the normal person and just following this advice can be dangerous because things keep changing. That is why diversification is key. Yeah, all good points there. You're kind of um, saying what I'm saying. So in answer to the first part of your question, I'm trying to give you a little bit of clue as to timing, what I think is gonna happen. There will be high inflation later on, um, but if you, uh, yeah, I've kind of answered all this stuff during this Q&A, so I don't repeat it too much. But yes, timing is very much everything, because I think we're going to have huge deflation, and then we're going to have big inflation. All those things are going to happen. The question is timing. Is it hard to time? It's absolutely hard to time. Um, and it's never mind the, the normal person. It's hard to time for me, and I've got nothing else to do but look at this stuff all day, every day. So um, it is very, very hard to time. Um, and that is why I'm diversified. I have my buckets so that even if I'm wrong, any one of these buckets can take care of me. But some people are not in that situation and they just they don't have enough really to fill up one bucket, let alone to split it uh, three ways or four ways or five ways and hedge their bets. So thank you for the commentary, uh, Andrea. I think it's, uh, it's good. Um, a lot, lot of wisdom in what you're asking there. You think they can get away with the bail-in crap in the US? I doubt it. Um, yeah. They can, they can get away with the bail-in crap, absolutely. Uh, because you, it's all a function of how desperate people get. And so uh, the bail-in is the, the free market way to do it. Um, it's the bail-outs that are completely immoral and, and evil. Bail-ins is, is the free market way of doing it. If you, if you invest in a bank, meaning you're a depositor at a bank, and that bank goes belly up, you didn't investigate their balance sheet, you didn't investigate the strength of that bank, 
Now, I sympathize with you because you've been trained not to for 100 years. You've, told, you've been told the government will um, protect you, the government will protect depositors, there's the federal insurance against your depositors, and you've been told not to give a damn about those banks. And so you probably don't. But at the end of the day, you should have. But then you've got another problem. Now, you don't only have to guess which banks are like over leveraged and in a tough position. See, it's the small community banks that are more conservative. Um, but should you put your money in those? Well, to me, it's like the top four are going to get bailed out. And they're going to let the little ones die. So maybe it's the little ones that you want to put your money into. This is the thing you can't, the free market is so broken because there is no free market. The free market's gone. It's all central blankers. It's this cabal of just people who think they understand things, pulling levers, trying to do things. Of course, they're enriching themselves, patting themselves on the back at how great they are. If you just listen to Yellen, Bernanke, and all these people, oh my God, they think they're so great. They are the reason for all this disaster. And so you've got to try and, you don't have to, get, guessing the market is so much easier than guessing which one of their friends they're going to take care of and when and why. So it's just making, it's making this, this crash so much worse. Great video. I own rental properties all in the same market. Inventory is extremely low in the market. Question, isn't real estate local? Yes, there's some local relevance to real estate, but how do I want to explain this? It's like, um, here's, an, okay, here's an analogy. There's, a, there's some little fish who kind of live and eat the froth or something off of a whale. And it's like, yeah, there's a, little, there's a local real estate market there and maybe one fish is doing better than another fish. But if the whale swims to another ocean, all those fish are going with. Um, I hope that was a useful. Let me give you another analogy. Here's, a, here's a, a, my nephew actually called me up about mid-January. He's like, hey, Max, you've been following this corona stuff. I was like, no, not really. He's like, this is massive. This is going to be a monster. This is completely out of control. The way to control a pandemic is to find patient zero, retrace all the steps. They can't find patient zero. This thing is out. And here's what's going to happen. Um, hand sanitizer is going to get short. Masks are going to get short. Going to get, uh, the prices are going to spike. How do we make money on this? I want to invest in 3M because they make hand sanitizer and all this stuff. And I was like, whoa, 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 time out. If you think, if what you're describing comes to fruition, you're going to get a complete market collapse. Stock markets are going to get crushed because of the, the popping of the bubble. You, the fact that 3M sells more hand sanitizer is this important compared to the significance of the bubble popping in the mortgage industry and in the real estate and industry and the whole, all the things that make the real estate bubble happen. The, the local, like, yeah, the Midwest is going to do better than New York. Sure, real estate's local. Is, mid, is the Midwest going to be scared and spared? No, because these are all little fish on the back of the whale and the whale is going to the bottom of the ocean. It's like, oh, is some companies going to do better than the other in the stock market? Of course, but when they're all going to get smashed. You know, I love gold. You know, I love uh, Bitcoin. It can get smashed because what's happening is that the entire deleveraging is happening. The bubble is popping and everything can get smashed. So yes, Bitcoin is, is, is local, but in this context, no, forget about it. All real estate gets hit and hit hard soon. Supercar, hi Max, wouldn't it be smart to take a loan to buy precious metals and BTC and wait until inflation will take care of the loan? Yes, again, we can absolutely go and leverage ourselves to the eyeballs. And if you can hold on for two, three years, hyperinflation should, uh, hyperinflate away all that debt and you've still got the, the, um, the assets, the precious metals, the Bitcoin, a perfectly reasonable solution. However, you're, you're entirely banking on the um, governments and the central banks printing the money into oblivion. And you're banking on the fact that you can last for a couple of years. What if they do bail-ins instead of bailouts? What if they, someone, some world leader somewhere has the strength, has the gonads to say, oh, we're not doing that. We're not going into hyperinflation. We are letting the deleverage happen. Now you're completely screwed. You will lose everything. So that is the challenge. What are the central bankers going to do? We know the market wants to deleverage. We know we should, we just want to be in, in, in cash uh, and yeah, we just want to be in cash, but 
if they start printing, which they've already done two trillion in the first little glitch of this uh, tremor, what happens when the market goes down another 40%? How much are they gonna tr print? 10 trillion, 20 trillion, 30 trillion, 100. They'll get, they've already said they're gonna print whatever it takes. So the hyperinflation, if I had to choose, gun to the head, I say hyperinflation, forget about de uh, deflation. Forget about it. Now, in order to have the political will to print $20 trillion, they're not like, if someone comes out now and says, let's print $20 trillion as a preemptive cursor to the collapse, they'd get laughed out of town. So, for example, they have to let the market go from 29,000 down to 18,000, then they can say, let's print $2 trillion today, right? Same thing, they've got, you can't come out and say, let's preemptively do it, like this is so much worse. If, that level of knowledge and understanding of the of ec economics would mean they know that they can't print that money. They should not print that money and they should let it collapse. So they're not going to do that. It's got to get smashed, then they print. It's, but it's all to do with speed. How fast do they print? That's, that's the question. Um, gotcha. Uh, do you think that Bitcoin will fall again in the near future? Thank you for your awesome video, by the way. This is the, this is the repetition here at this point. It absolutely can. In fact, I think it probably will. Probably gold too, but you may not be able to get your hands on it. And we'll just see. Wait to see a big crash, like a, another big crash day in the stock market. And when gold and silver don't go down in the days before or after, and Bitcoin don't go down in the days before and after, you'll know that asset class is now decorrelated. Enough money is enough money is aware that the printing is a problem and they start rushing into those assets. Yeah. Hi, Max. Thank you so much for all your work you do and for everyone, thank you for all of the information you are getting out there to everyone. Here is my question. In your opinion, what is the safest way to hold Bitcoin? I'm trying to put mine onto a Ledger Nano S. Is this a good route to take? Yes, it's an excellent route to take, uh, Tina. So yeah, great question. Do not leave your Bitcoin on exchanges. Kraken, Coinbase, I love all these companies. I use these companies. I send them my money. They give me the Bitcoin. I get my, my Bitcoin the hell off the exchange. Likewise, I don't leave my money in there. I send them my Bitcoin. I sell my Bitcoin. I get the money back. Don't leave assets on these exchanges for long amounts of time. Very, very risky. Uh, Ledger Nano S is a great, great, great um, thing. I really like it. Um, and there's another one which is kind of different. There's the physical device idea, like a ledger. There's also, you've got um, another product called Armory, Bitcoin Armory. It's actually, it's a, it's a, a project that is officially stopped, um, but there are some coders and, and some, some people who still maintain it. Uh, and that's another very, very good way to hold. I would, I would argue it's the gold standard of holding your Bitcoin. It's a little bit more complicated, a little bit more technical, for the vast majority of people, for the last, for the vast majority of amounts of money, I'm going to say use a Ledger Nano. Anything, anything below six figures, anything less than hundred thousand dollars in Bitcoin, just use a Ledger Nano or one of its competitors. All good. Uh, Dixie, scary to think about, even if we are somewhat prepared. Yes, it is scary, Dixie. Um, Murph, great advice. Thank you. What would happen if we have a repeat of this outbreak again next winter before we have a vaccine? Surely they could not repeat this shutdown and money printing, etc. They can always money print, guys. Never, never ever say they can't print money print and they can't bail in. They always can. There is no limits. They can print $200 trillion if they want. There are no limits. Can, uh, can Corona... Yeah, listen, I think Corona will hit again hard next year. There might be a vaccine for it. We might have just gotten over it. It's like, get over it. Like, I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not staying home from work. That was a silly overreaction. Um, we might just get over it. There's another option here for pretty much anyone under 60. Very, very small doses of it. If you just get a, a very small dose of Corona, your body has a few days it starts fighting it and it can eventually overwhelm it very quickly. But now your body's seen it. It's developed some antibodies to it, and you are immune. There's that's there's a little bit of doubt about that. We have some confirmation, but we are you are now immune to um, that strain. There's a possibility you can get reinfected, but for the most part, we believe you are immune. It's entirely possible, and yeah, it's entirely possible that they're going to say 
we're going to go and deliberately infect, like show up, get a lick of a swab, get a very small amount of corona, your body will see it, you'll fight it, you'll beat it, you're now immune to it, and we'll get to herd immunity very, very fast. To get to herd immunity, about 80% of the population has to have seen corona and learned how to beat it. So that's a strategy that they may take. Um, usually a vaccine does that, but with a pretend virus that looks like it, but doesn't actually make you sick. That's the goal. They may say, screw the vaccine. Let's just give people the actual live virus and, uh, and we'll do it in some kind of managed way and let them see it because we have to get back to work. So there's a few different options there. Uh, thank you, dude. What about gold, silver, mining stocks? I answered that one before, but great question. What do you think about the 50% gap on silver price? Yeah, predictable. The question is, does it revert or is this the big one where it never goes back? For those of you who don't know what the question is, the price of physic, getting your hands on physical Bitcoin, an actual coin that you can hold in your hands or calling your broker and saying, hey, get, uh, can I buy some silver? is at least 50%, but in some places 100%, meaning the price of gold today is I think about 14 bucks. But if you wanna buy a silver eagle, you're paying about $22, $24. It's a significant markup because the physical is in short supply. The paper just sell, 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 sell. They can sell as much as they want, but people, a lot of smart people are not trusting it. So they will pay the premium for the physical. This has happened several times. 2009, I think 2011, 2013 as well, it happened. The price of physical and paper splits and uh, during some kind of scare, some kind of panic. And for delivery takes weeks at a time. The, the price of physical goes up significantly. The premium for physical is high. And in all three of the last situations, if you waited patiently for about three, four months, the price stayed low and the price of phys the premiums came down and you could buy silver much cheaper than before than in the peak scare. But at some point, those prices will split and never come back. And the corrupt paper market will be exposed for what it is, and the physical real stuff will be where the magic is. So that's the question. We're all, every time we're at this situation, we ask, is this the time when it never comes back? In which case, you'll be happy to pay the premium. If the price comes back two, three months now, and they catch up on demand, maybe you get to, maybe you get to buy gold and silver at much cheaper, physical gold much cheaper, without the exorbitant premiums. They're the pros, they're the cons, they're the risks. You've got to make the decision with what you want to do. G'day, Max. Awesome content as usual. Love your work. I purchased cryptocurrencies ERC20 back in 2018 on my Mu wallet and haven't accessed them for a while. Mu platform has changed and I cannot access the old platform. Any suggestions or tutorials on how to retrieve these altcoins via the new platform, greatly appreciated. Uh, G'day, personal trainer. I haven't um, created tutorials for that. I'm also not that familiar with uh, the Mu wallet. I don't, not sure, I don't think I use it either. Um, but listen, there's going to be some help, uh, some forums out there. If you ask that question on, uh, ask the question on um, BitcoinTalk.org, I think it is on the main Bitcoin forums, uh, or if not the you bought uh, you bought yeah so, or if, if not the um, the the F um, the, the the Ethereum forum. Go on there and ask that question and that will direct you to the right forum and then they, someone on that forum will tell you how to handle that. Uh, don't bug me. Thank you for the video, that's much appreciated. Is gold money a safe place to hold precious metals? So I used to have metals at gold money. Um, they used to, at the time, they were based on an island just off of the UK. Um, and I'm not sure if that is still the case. Um, but I haven't had any contact with them for several years, so I don't, I'm not up to date. But at the time, they were a very reputable company. I like them a lot, and I have no reason to believe that they're not still reputable, but I'm not up to date, so I can't, can't guarantee them. Why have the US government passed legislation to reduce the level of bank reserves to zero? It uh, looks as if they're provoking a bank run. If it is... Uh, if, if it's so that if a major run starts to develop, they can impose the dreaded bail-in as an act of national security. Absolutely correct. They can, the, the bail-ins or bank holidays, all of these things are up their sleeve and can, uh, this, is the, this is the risk of, of cash. This is the big risk of cash. And yes, all those things are possibilities. Um, why have they done this? I mean, they've done that because if they didn't do that, banks would have to call themselves insolvent. So... Gets them to kick, them, kick the can down the road for a little bit. 
Thanks, Max. I was wondering what your thoughts of the Mazara R, National Economic Security and Reformation Act started in the 70s from the farmers being foreclosed on and made its way to the US Supreme Court. It basically forgives debt, mortgages, abolishes the income tax, uh, abolishes the IRS, and many other things considered illegal. Okay, sounds good so far. Um, here's a link to the article describing in detail. I'm wondering if this administration is simply running up credit before declaring bankruptcy with the central bankers and leaving them with the debt. Um, okay, I wouldn't be thinking that, you said this administration, meaning Trump. So let's talk about Trump for a little bit. Um, I've been a big Trump fan, because, especially compared to the other competitors. Um, he was pushing back hard on leftism and on the whole progressive socialist victim mentality. Like that is the biggest disease the country has right now, victim mentality. And he was doing a fantastic job of slapping people silly and getting people out of that. He did a lot of good things, um, but something he did was he ran up the debt significantly. And maybe I was looking through rose-colored glasses, but I'll tell you where my thoughts was, fingers crossed I was hoping he was doing. I asked myself the question, what would I do if I was Trump, knowing I'm sitting on the biggest bubble the world's ever seen, knowing that there's a whole worldwide calamity about to happen? And I'd go back through history and I'd say, well, what are the problems that happen? One, wars follow big time. You've got Hitler came as a rise out of, um, out of the, 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 the Great Depression. Um, you know, other fascists, uh, we've got Mussolini. So tyrants and psychopaths do come out of these Great Depressions. When people are desperate, they will vote for these kinds of things. And war is absolutely a possibility. So one thing I would do, while people are still silly enough to accept my bits of paper, I would rebuild the military to make sure after the crash, no one is messing with us. So he did that. That's interesting. Step two, what would I do? I would rebuild the infrastructure of the country. Brand new airports, brand new um, railroads, brand new roads, brand new, brand new, all the infrastructure that we could get so that the country is perfectly positioned to grow its way out of it after the very healthy detoxing and withdrawal symptoms of the drugs of endless money is gone, the economy can grow. Nothing's going to help it grow than a brand new infrastructure. He did not get that one done. The, he, that was an election promise. He tried to do it. The Feds fought him at every, uh, the Dems fought him at every level, and he never got to rebuild the infrastructure of the country. But he did get to rebuild the military. The third thing I would do is I would fight like tooth and nail to bring production back, bring manufacturing back to the U.S so that we can produce for ourselves and grow our way out of it. He was well on the way to that and it hasn't really happened. Uh, it, it just hasn't had time to happen, but the trade deals with uh, Mexico, USA, Japan, Korea, China, he, to the best of his ability, he was doing all of that. He, um, and so these are all very good things. So I look at that as a scorecard for Trump and I think maybe he, he, he's completely knowledgeable about all of this. There's no doubt he's a very smart person. He's a marketing G strategist, like as a marketing strategist, he's an absolute genius, no doubt about that. So maybe he's doing exactly what I would do if I was president and just trying to get everything set so that when the crash happens, we can come out of it as best as we can. However, with the last few months and the, the bail-ins and the everything else, this has been very, very hard for me to feel like he knows what's going on. All the moves that he's making, I, I do. Maybe I have rose-colored glasses, or maybe I give him too much credit because I am a little bit of a Trump fanboy. Because we just have been had such horrific leaders for so long, and he has been doing somewhat of a good job in some ways. So, um, yeah, I don't know. The two trillion dollar bail-in, I would, I would have just let it all go. But two possibilities: one, he's completely incompetent; two, uh, other option, he wants to buy a little bit more time. He thinks he can buy six months. He thinks he can buy twelve months. He thinks during the middle of COVID-19, he can bring manufacturing back. He can get some more things done. I don't know. Maybe his strategy is whatever it, ta this is, whatever it takes to keep me in power for another four years because he doesn't want to, it'll be so much worse under Biden. Maybe that's the deal. But if after the election, he's not turning it around and just not doing the hyperinflation thing, then then I got to I got to assume that he's completely incompetent, and I was very wrong about him. So that's my view on the Trump situation. Oh, I'm so glad he did what he did in awakening American spirit, in pushing back on victim mentality, and giving people 
um, what was the what would be the word? Unsilencing the silent majority. I'd say he has done an untold amount of good to this country because the the psychopaths have been in control for for way too many decades. And uh, he brought some reason and sense to uh, the White House. So it was very good to see him do that. Who thanks Max. Question, what if they are intentionally collapsing the final financial system so people will eventually accept the digital currency and UBI? So everything is rigged to facilitate this. What's your thoughts? Look, that absolutely could be the case. It doesn't change anything from my perspective. Whether the collapse is deliberate and planned um, or they're completely out of control. Either way, it means absolutely. And I'll throw you another conspiracy theory out there. What if COVID-19 was uh, manufactured and released so that when the collapse happens, we don't all look at our central bankers and politicians and line them up and shoot them. We, most of the public think this collapse is because of COVID-19. Most people don't understand that the bubble was gonna find a pin no matter what. So there's another conspiracy theory. Is it true, is it not true? I don't know, it doesn't change anything. Uh, the, the, the bubble has popped. The crash is happening. Who cares where it came from? Uh, I mean, it might change who you want to lynch afterwards, but whatever. Really interesting video, Max. Appreciate it. One question about Bitcoin. Do you have any thoughts on the price right now? Are we back in a bear? We're going to crash down to 2K or even before? Yes. Same question as before. Um, do we go lower? And it just depends on how much money they print and how quickly we lose the faith in that. I think we're probably going to go down. I think we're probably going to go down in Bitcoin. We're probably going to go down in gold. Whether you can get your hands on gold after it goes down, different story. But I think everything's going to get smashed and, and cash is a pretty damn good place to be. That's what I think. And another just cataclysmic, cataclysmic failure of government and systems to not allow the market to react nimbly. To sell, like for the long-term Bitcoin holders or and something, maybe many of them, want to sell and sell more than they do in anticipation of this, which would which would make the bubble not so small. But if they do, they incur massive capital gains tax. And so they're hesitant to sell. They don't think like, yeah, in order to sell Bitcoin, you got to think that it's got to go down by, you know, more than at least 30, 40% or else the capital gains tax is, if you, if you correctly predict that Bitcoin goes down 20%, but you got to pay 30% income to uh, capital gains tax, you don't win, you can't sell. If you think it's going to go down 50%, then fine, you sell, you pay the 30% gains tax, you buy again at the bottom. But there's so, just how, we are so far from a free market. Things are so broken. Capital gains tax is one of them that just prohibits people from quickly and efficiently get the, getting out of um, assets that they want to be in and reducing the amount of the crash afterwards. So it's just a frustration that this the, the capitalist system is just completely and utterly dead. And this crash is a complete um, vindication of the free market. And it just, it should, with fingers crossed, it'll bury, bury central governments and, and bury the concept of big governments. I'm not holding my breath though. What about cookie cutter, uh, three, two, small to medium sized houses? Everyone needs a place to live. I agree with you on Bitcoins and PMs. Yeah. Um, Again, people need a place to live. So there's several things happening. Demographics, we're at the, at the demographic cliff. Uh, old people are going to start dying. Uh, the baby boomer generation starts dying. Plus, we've now got COVID-19. So we've got less people using it. Plus, we've got this new concept, a sharing economy. Um, people being more efficient. Before, it was like, plus the bubbles. It's like you have, a, you have a holiday house in the Ozarks, and you have this house here, and you have another one in Florida, and you're a snowbird. When all this stuff collapses and your, your retirement savings gets chopped in half on the stock market, do you really need to hold all those extra holiday houses? Do you really need to do this? Plus, you've got the freezing of the financial markets. Liquidity becomes a problem. The, the bank's lending become a problem. So it's the whale going to the bottom of the ocean. And you're talking about, is this particular fish that feeds off the whale, you know, going to swim all of a sudden upstream? No, it feeds off the whale. It goes where the whale goes. And the forces moving against real estate are so big that this, this asset class, that house, this Midwest, this city, irrelevant. All real estate gets smashed, is my prediction. Uh, real estate is going get, to get, get hit hard. You give no reason as to why. Um, 
so I kind of just did them. So what? We got demographics, which got a huge problem. The freezing of the uh, the um, the, uh, the freezing uh, the freezing. Oh my God, my head's gone mental. Um, the freezing of the liquidity markets and the mortgage markets and all those things. So people just can't borrow ten you know ten percent down and borrow ninety percent to borrow to buy a house. Plus, <clears throat> you've got the a huge effect that Airbnb has had. Like Airbnb has had a huge effect in real estate prices in pretty much every city in the world because it raised their value because the utility of the house went up because people were so much traveling, so much holidays. Holiday and travel has collapsed, collapsed, let alone all the people who lost their jobs and can't afford to, you know, might have to downgrade, might have to move. They, they were two people who had studios and now they've got to move into and share a two bedroom apartment. But <clears throat> there's just so many forces working against real estate Forget real estate. It's going to hurt. It's going to hurt bad. Uh, great video. Thank you. i got a question for the upcoming video, Contrarian Dude. You talked about the gold and silver market. What is your opinion on platinum? It seems to be, it seems it seems in the same spot as silver. Uh, yeah, I agree. I think it's a platinum or palladium that's like the third, they're the, between the two of them, they're the third and fourth monetary metals. I never really looked at them, but maybe there's a huge play there as well. We talk about uh, silver slingshotting past gold and gold slingshotting past everything else. Maybe platinum's a third slingshot. Slingshot's part, uh, silver and gold, whatever. But I must admit, I've never looked at it and uh, and I don't know too much about it. Well, dude, really good advice. Great vid, thank you. Can you please let us know where to buy physical silver? Wherever you can at the moment, it's very, very hard to get. And it depends on your quantities. Do you want to get just coins wherever you can? So most of the, the e-tailers, the guys we can buy online, they'll ship it to you anywhere in the world. These guys have got... 14 week delays minimum. Um, if you can, if you're lucky, you just shop around at your um, at your gold and silver shops, your coin shops, your bullion dealers in your city. You you might find one that you can go and get. Um, so that's a good chance. Amazing info. Thank you guys. Hey, thank you for all the comments. I I read them and enjoy them. I have to brush over them quickly, or else you guys will get bored. But thank you for all the positive comments. I do appreciate it. Thanks so much for the video. I have a question. Hope you can answer this in the next video. Do you think the Bitcoin for you cycle still holds or is this cycle much bigger and longer than four years? Appreciate. Fantastic question. So I guess the same concept as the whale and the little fish. So no, the Bitcoin cycle, does it hold? Yes, the Bitcoin, the, the Bitcoin cycle holds, but it's a relatively little fish compared to the whale. So I'm not focused, the four year cycle of Bitcoin's a bit of a eh, whatever right now. It's the other markets that are important. How much money are they gonna print? How quickly are they gonna print? How fast the price is gonna fall before they do print? These are the big questions that's way more significant than the four year cycle of Bitcoin. Uh, they're promoting Tiki, okay. Uh, always enjoy watching your videos. You are very practical and I've been on the same page for the last 20 years. Go pick on PMs. Thank you for that. Great video, just in time too. Thank you for that. Hi Max, one more question. Where do you see the bottom for the Dow in two or three years, please? It all depends on the printing, but I'm gonna say the Dow is gonna go below 10,000. At some point we'll see the Dow below 10,000. Uh, but then again, we, we gotta see how much they print. Hi Max, great video. I just crossed my nose, which drives me nuts. Hey Max, great video. Uh, thanks for sharing so much important information at such a critical time. My question is if you see a first generation blockchain cryptocurrency such as Bitcoin as safe haven assets in the long term, or you default, prefer the privacy base? I answered this before. I'll go Bitcoin over the other ones because the branding is so strong. Um, epic content, Max, thank you. Appreciate it. Hey Max, by the way, if you have not watched this video, really go back and watch this video. Um, where am I? I'll, I forget the name of it, so I can't show it to you. Um, but, but when this video ends, I don't want to lose my spot. When this video ends, I'll scroll to the top so you can see the name of the video and search for it. But it was the, it's the, the most, most recently uploaded, up, uploaded video. So the video uploaded before this one that you're watching now. Uh, have I read that? Yeah, there's a question mark here. What if you've got rental properties and that is your only source of income through the crisis? Yeah, There's a great question. So. Cash flow is king, yes. Oh, and it breaks my heart to do this because I'm such a cash flow guy. And what am I in? I'm in all assets that have no cash flow. I'm in cash, I'm in um, crypto, and I'm in, um, man, I'm getting tired. I can't think of words anymore. 
uh, precious metals. All three of them don't have cash flow. I am a cash flow guy. I want to get into cash flow as fast as humanly possible. I am salivating at buying up incredible cash flow deals. But all the cash flow assets that I can find are massively overpriced and they're in, and they're in the bottle and they're going to get smashed. So much to my heart ache, I am out of all cash flow things. I'm sitting on the sidelines and my goal is to come in and buy all these cash flow things at pennies on the dollar. Dividend yielding stock, real estate um, with great income. Um, and well, actually, they're the, they're the main two. I can't wait. They're the two things that are going to get smashed the hardest. They're the two things I can't wait to get in, but we've got to wait for it to get to the bottom. A good two years away. Thank you for this video. So in regards to BTC, would you recommend holding the asset on a physical ledger versus any exchange that you have purchased on? 100% yes. Uh, what about bonds? Yeah, so Harry Dent's into bonds. I don't know, man. I don't do much with bonds. Um, and so I don't even know. I've never bought a bond. I don't even know how to, how to buy a bond. I don't know, you just do it from your TD Ameritrade account? I don't even know how to do it. Um, I don't know, but same, same is true for treasuries. Do you just buy treasuries at your TD Ameritrade account? I don't know. If you know the answer to that, write it in the comments, please. I'd love to hear it. If you have any more questions, write them in the comments. Um, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll happily get to them as soon as I can. Um, what about bonds? Again, what you're betting on, you're betting on, so you're betting on the currency that the bonds are denominated in. So I'm just going to go ahead and say you're talking about US dollar uh, bonds, corporate bonds, muni bonds, you're talking about that kind of stuff. Okay. So you're betting on some of these companies' ability to pay you back. Uh, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. But you've got a, a central bank there saying that they've already said we will print as much money as we need to print up these, to, to, to buy up these bonds so the bond market doesn't collapse. They're lying. They won't do that forever. They'll do it until their friends offload all their toxic assets onto the taxpayer, and then they'll stop doing it. So for that reason, I'm anti-bond. There you go. I just made that up on the spot. I hope that's helpful and coherent. What do you think about the Bitcoin bottom? Many experts are saying $1,000. You kind of answered this already. Where do you buy and store Bitcoin and crypto to be able to safeguard it in a crisis? Uh, what exchange or where can you store at the least risk to government seizure and or being stolen? Thanks, Cameron. Uh, so from converting fiat to Bitcoin, um, I use uh, Kraken. Um, Bitfenex is a good one. Uh, another good, so a good way to do this is if you just go to coinmarketcap.com and click on Bitcoin. Uh, do you click on Bitcoin? No. You go across to the trading volume column and you click on, in the Bitcoin row, click on the trading volume column. It's a clickable number. You click on it and you see all the different exchanges. Look at the top two or three US dollar to BTC pairs. Look at those and you'll see the, the top three exchanges. Just go with one of them, research the three of them, see which one you like to use. And it depends on what country you're in. For I think for Europeans and, Austra and Americans, I think uh, Kraken's a good one. Um, for most of the world, I think yeah, Bitfinex is a good one. So just go and check those out. That's how I do that research. Uh, where do I store them? Uh, the, I think for the vast majority of people, a, um, a nano ledger, one of the, one of the little um, physical private keys is what you want to use. Hello, Max. Uh, thanks for your videos. They are very helpful. I currently live in Dallas, Texas. and was considering a different line of work. Do you have a, uh, and recommendations as to the opportunities that you see in a current crisis? Wanted to get your thoughts. Thanks for helping and educating people. Hey, great question. This is a fun one. I've actually helped a couple of people with this just in my local life. One of my friends here, she's a server at um, Capital Grill. It's a high-end steakhouse. It's probably the premier restaurant in the city. And um, she's just completely out of work. So all the restaurants are shut down. Um, and so what is she doing? She had actually built her business. She actually friended everyone on Facebook, all of her customers. And so she, has, she literally built a list. Very, very smart. She's got an asset. So she has a list of some of the wealthiest people in Kansas City, the people who would go and spend $10,000 a month at this restaurant. She's got a list of very, very wealthy people, right? They are willing to pay enormous amounts of money to, to, to have a normal life. They're stuck in quarantine. They're stuck at home. Um, they don't want to go to the stores and, uh, and, and, and expose themselves to, to corona. Many of them are old. I was like, you've got a tremendous business opportunity here. Why don't you offer to just be their valet it's like, hey, I'll go to the grocery stores. I'll go and deal with the whole infection city that is grocery stores right now. I'll get you a big, long shopping list. I'll bring it back. You tip me. 
we'll make it a deal. Also, she's um she's she's actually she's she's buying food for them, like as in takeout food. So the restaurants are still doing takeout. So she's going and buying. That they'll tell her what she wants. She goes and buys it for two hundred dollars, like a beautiful steak and stolly dolly and all the cool things that happen at Capitol Grill. She'll come and drive it to someone's house, give it to them, and you know they'll tip her 30 40 percent, and she's she's crushing it. So that was one example. Um, so there's still people with money. Think about those people. Uh, I'm going to give you a few different ways to think about this. Here's one way. There's still people with money. Do you know any of them? Ask them. What do you want? What do you need right now? Get on Facebook. Get it out there. Get them introducing you to people who want you to be a valet, run around, or whatever. That's at that level. I don't know if you're at that level. Like that was a server who literally lost their job, had very little in savings. How do I make rent next week? That's what I told her. She's making more money than she normally makes. Um, so she, she, she's crushing it. Okay. A little bit higher levels. If you're, you are your target market, you're still someone who has some money and you're trying to think, what's a cool business I could open right now? What is it? Just what, solve a problem that you have. You are your target market. Solve a problem that you have and then figure out how to uh, share that with other people and make money from it. So if you have money, you're the target market, figure out how to solve that problem. If you don't have money, figure out how to serve people who do have money. A lot of them are thinking this is just gonna be here for two, three months, it's gonna, be, uh, it's gonna pass, they're not really worried. They're not worried about being poor anytime soon. They still feel like millionaires. Um, and maybe they are, because maybe they're in great assets or maybe they're all in cash or whatever, so I'm not saying they're not. But these are the people you've got to figure out a way to serve those people and to actually get in contact with them and uh, make them your circle and start advertising to them. That's what I would do. Max, where do you buy and store your... Did we do this one? Where do you buy and store your Bitcoin? No, we've done that one. Hello, Max. Currently live in Dallas. Different line of work. Done that. Great vid. Thank you. With everyone being so scared of losing jobs, would Bitcoin be a good investment? When do we sell our gold? At $5,000? Uh, in order to buy the Dow Jones. With the Fed printing endless money, wouldn't people still buy stocks? Yeah, kind of answered this uh, over and over again. You un by now, I think you understand the war. It's a war between market forces desperately trying to um, deleverage and the bank desperately trying to keep prices from collapsing. That's the war, and to, I don't know which way that's going to go, but we'll see. There is no limit to the printing, no limit at all. Um, and so... Do, will they print forever? I don't know. Will they do bail-ins? I don't know. Two very different outcomes. Uh, hello, Max. Uh, we nearly finished you, by the way. I'm looking at my scroll bar, which you might not be able to see, but we're nearly at the bottom. Uh, hello, Max. F uh, thanks. Fascinating. Extremely interesting and useful. I agree. I have difficulty in getting rid of assets in great loss since years. Due to bad advice, well, it can be painful. Then get in cash, and then dollars will be worth only the paper. So gold. Okay. Buy it. Hold it. Oh, this is a long, let me skip through and find some question marks. Uh, at that point, we'll be shut down. And I need to put it, ATM. Yeah, ATMs may be shut down. I get it. I'm looking for a question mark because I don't want to read all of this. Real estate, I've, I've covered real estate. Uh, love your precious and rare videos. Could you tell us more about your subscription? Okay, so uh, Owen, thanks and take care of yourself from COVID-19. Hi, thanks, Robin. This is all, I don't mean to dismiss this, but in a live situation like this where people are listening to me, I can't go through and read all that because I'll get bored. So I had to skip over a lot of it. But I think I've covered the vast majority of this during the, 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 this talk, except for this part. Talk a little bit about your subscription. Um, yeah, you, you can still become a member of Success Council. It is a one-time joining fee. You get membership for life. Um, and what I'll do is I'll put the, there's a, a, I'll put a link below this. It's a 90 minute webinar. It just gives, it was a, done a year ago, completely predicts what happens, completely tells you what to do and how to stay ahead of it. And if you followed the advice, you would have crushed it. And then at the very end, there's a pitch for how to join success council. If you still want to, and what you get when you do, I'm just going to go and put that link in there. And if you want to do that, and if anybody else wants to do that, find out how to join success council, which a bunch of people did in the last week. Um, I'll certainly, you can get all that there. Oh, by the way, I had like an extra, uh, I think it was like three or 400 subscribers just in the last three days. So thank you very much to all our new subscribers. Um, which guy stocks? Don't know. I'm a senior who is receiving social security and a small pension. Been in crypto since early 2018 and have a small amount. Which asset class is showing any immediate promise? That's going to be the whole topic of this, uh, this video. Um, and so I think I've already answered that. Thanks for the update, Max. I have a bunch of cash on Coinbase. 
Uh, is it more secure there than in my bank account? I would say slightly less secure, but I think it's pretty decent. Uh, is it better to just take the cash out of any bank and get it in dollars? Yeah, I would definitely take some cash out of the bank and just sit on actual dollars. Uh, yep, do you have any recommendation for silver bullion in Singapore? Oh yeah, my good friends at Singapore, uh, sorry, silverbullion.co.sg. Um, that's who I use in Singapore. Great bullion dealer. Uh, Greg Gregerson is the CEO who I've met a few times. He's a great guy and I really like what they're doing. Tell them uh, Max Wright and Success Council sent you. I think I used to have an affiliate account there. I may still have. They might sling me a couple of bucks for, for directing you, but that's a good place. I hold medals in that. I still currently hold medals in that vault. It's a really good vault. I've toured it. It's fantastic. Thank you from Germany. Max, I think this video is right on the money and I don't take issue with anything you said. Those of us who build up and protect the wealth and get through the next crisis are going to thrive. The, uh, the rest who put their faith in the talking heads are going to suffer. I just want to observe that the message in this video seems to be a far cry from the last video I saw in which you were lauding the Trump administration and their plans for the economy. I'm not putting this out to be critical of you or Trump but I feel like I'm missing something. Yeah, it's a great question, Ken. I, I can, I've totally um, softened and soured on Trump. I kind of covered this just a few minutes ago, so I won't do it again. But yeah, I think that's the key you're missing. His reaction to this crisis has been weak. Uh, weak, weak's the wrong word. <coughs> well, weak in a, yeah. If it were me, well, I, well here's a, a big caveat to this. What's required and the strength required is absolutely ginormous. And we're only a few months from an election even if you have the strength to come out and say, guys, we've abused the money for 30, 40, 50 years. We are going to have to take our medicine and it's going to hurt. And we're going to have to band together and work our way out of this. And it's going to be a very painful two, three years. That's the message that needs to be said. If you say it and the next administration starts saying, hey, you know, I'm going to save you all. And then it just, just vote for me and we'll get rid of this nonsense. And I'll print money into oblivion and make sure you, I'll save you. It's entirely possible that the, the, the right remedy will be taken away. And so I, I'll even, maybe I'm still rose-colored glasses, but maybe Trump's doing the right thing and doing whatever needs to happen to win election. But if he's still after the election, if he's still not, uh, if he's still not, we've got to let this collapse happen and we're going to work our way out of it, then I don't, I don't he, he, then in my opinion, he's doing all the wrong moves with regards to the economy. Um, I'd still rather him ahead of, Biden and whoever else is fighting because um, at least on the social issues and the hard nut losers message is a very powerful message. But um, yeah, no, my tone my tone has changed on Trump. Uh, it's at least a very more, it's a lot more cautious. And last few questions here. How do you protect your crash from a bail-in? I've covered that. Uh, is buying a 28-day US government bond? I don't think the length of the US bond is relevant. Um, they ought, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. Uh, and yeah, treasuries, treasury bonds is possibly a good way. It's a good hedge, at least. So I know Harry Dent uh, promotes bonds, um, treasury bonds. And so, yeah, tre treasury bonds could well be a good way to go. If it's a complete deflationary cycle, as um, Harry Dent is predicting, then this is, a, this, is a good, this is a good one. So I'll just competing things there. Peter Schiff says US dollar is the worst house on the worst street. Um, Harry Dent says US dollar is the best house on the worst street. So there's two very, very good guys here with two very, very differing opinions. And um, it's very, very interesting. So I'm hedging and I'm at, and with one of my buckets, US dollar is fantastic. With another one of my buckets, US dollar is a poison. So that's how I'm, I'm handling that. I'm hedging. <clears throat> Remember, let's go through this again. I really want to impress this point. Your psychology is the number one asset when we get out of this. It would be nice to have some resources for sure, but your psychology is the most valuable asset that you will have. When everyone else is crying and tearing and terrified and three years of just getting clobbered, 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 every investment they think, every way they turn, everything just gets destroyed. They thought they were being smart, they took it in cash, they were bailings. They thought they were smart, they did it in Bitcoin, they collapsed. They thought they were being smart, they got it in gold, the price of that collapsed too. When everything gets clobbered, that your psychology coming out of it is the number one thing. Because three years of that mental abuse of what we're about to go through is brutal. So given that your psychology is the number one thing, you don't need many resources at the other end of it. 
because you're going to have your psychology and you're going to come at it buying up everything in sight that has cash flow. And you're going to be just buying deals and you're going, to, you're going to multiply and speed up your wealth so much, it's just going to be obscene. You're going to do what Hilton did. You're going to buy four hotels that yield 100% in the bottom of the depression and you're going to grow an empire. That's what happens when your psychology is strong. That's your number one focus. Where do you suppose to keep your cash if it's not safe in the banks? I've covered this one. Okay, Calvin, uh, g'day Max. That thought that popped into your head might very well be God's spirit. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm quite a spiritual person here, but I don't want this channel to be too much about that. So I'm going to leave this. Thank you, Kelvin. Gold mining stocks, thoughts? Um, yeah, I've covered that. I don't know much about gold mining stocks, but apparently they slingshot past gold even better. And last thing, just Bitcoin, no alt Bitcoins? Yeah, for me, just I, I have 10% in altcoins, 90% in Bitcoin. That's me, just so you know. Okay, guys, that is wound up. I promised I would go to the top here. This video is called, This Rally is Your Last Chance to Get the Hell Out. Um, it was made March 27th, currently 4,000 views. If you haven't watched that video, watch it. Very, very important video that gives you a lot of tips and strategies. Um, this was the Q&A to that. So sometimes it gets a bit um, repetitive and I'm sorry for that, but people ask lots of questions, so I answer them. This video was just me talking. I wasn't so repetitive. I was more focused on the answers. And if you haven't watched that video, it's an absolute must. Um, Next, guys, subscribe, like, um, please share this. I don't, I'm not gonna, I don't monetize the video. You don't have to watch ads when you watch me. Um, I don't, uh, I don't, I don't, I'm not asking for money or, or chip in. I want you to save your money, but you can help me and you can help society by sharing this video. Ask at least one person to watch this and I really appreciate your help. And the next video is gonna be a cracker. I'm gonna go Peter Schiff, Harry Dent, Mike Maloney, head to head, the pros and cons of all three of their arguments as I see it. And we'll see if we can come up with a coherent plan about what to do. Guys, thank you so much. And I'll see you soon.